What is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to the Pokemon Wi Fi battle with your rule, of course, the Scarander. And yeah, today we're going against Adam, and yeah, his team looks really tough. Um, you know, clearly because he has a Mesprit, which is always, if anything, you know, that's the, probably the best Pokemon in PU, and depending on his set, it could definitely ruin me. Um, so we're dealing with, you know, Credili, um, Sandslash, which is always an issue. Uh, Mesprit, Silver Valley, Arbok, which is awesome in so many ways, and a Haunter. Haunter should also be said, it is one of the best Pokemon also in PU, mainly because of the stats primarily right now, just working so well against it. So with that in mind, you know, this is going to be a very tough team for me to be dealing with. And I myself is using a Scar Pharaoh, and <laughs> we just policy Parasect, so that's, hey, that's cool. And we use the White Herb um, variant, Mill Tank with Curse, a Solvest Lantern, um, Sandslash would be in a bulky Rapid Spin Stealth Rocker, it's a decent. Uh, it definitely fills a role for a team who needs a spinner and a rocker and can't do it with it. So you put, uh, two separates Pokemon can't speak today for some reason. And Orangoro with Flying Gym Seam because Orangoro is one of the coolest Pokemon ever. And I've really been looking forward to capitalize on that Pokemon primarily because it's very bulky, it's very hard, and with Flying Gym Seam, it is very scary in PU. And as a trick room user, it's probably better. But I'm using it here as an offensive Pokemon without the trick room. So yeah. Without further ado, I'm going to lead off with my Scarf Pharaoh and just see what my opponent wants to do. So with all of this said, let's of course go into the match. So from the get-go here, as stated, you know, I start off with the strongest Mon there is, as he starts with Cradle Lee. Now I have a decent chance going for U-turn to get some super effective damage here, but I won't be able to stop him for Stealth Rock. Luckily though, he do decide to switch out and go into the Anaconda. And that's um, that, that's unfortunate. Even though I have fair switching, this is not an ideal matchup for me to be dealing with. Though with that in mind, you know, I can switch in my Maurice, my Pangoro, I was going to say, but Orangoro, and basically go for some decent damage. As he decides to switch out, I'm not going to risk it, and go to Cradili, and this is good. Cradili is not going to be able to deal with a Science Shock combination and Focus Blast. Even with Leftovers, trust me, there is no coming back. You are dead, son. And yeah, we're just going to go for all-out pummeling, definitely showcasing what the Pangoro is all about. So I said it again, Orangoro, that they're pretty much the same name. Dear Lord, I'm messing this up. Anyway, we go for the easy cap and just annihilating the poor Great Lily, which probably could have been a ferocious mom from dealing with, but Orangoro just solved that issue for me. So he's starting off very early with a very aggressive lead here. And no Stealth Rock necessarily with my opponent, depending on his Sand Slash. As we see, Steel Valley comes out, and it's actually a Steel Sin Valley. So I don't want to risk it with a Focus Blast. I'm actually going to switch out to my Sand Slash. As it goes for the very fair play, which is a potting shot, lowering my attack and defense. No attack and special attack. So I'm clearly not as offensive as it brings the Mesprit. Now, just from the way he brought it, I definitely felt this is going to be the offensive variant with Live Forbes. I can't do too much versus this, so I'm going to go into my Belefi, basically to soak the Ice Beam. Uh, it would have been really unlucky had he had Energy Ball. But at the same time here, yeah, I can't necessarily do too much towards this Pokemon either. So I'm going to do actually the very, very bad play, which is go for actually Volt Switch. I think in hindsight, that was my best series of play if I actually gone for it, but I went for Scald. So that's, you know, that's my bad. <laughs> Volts would have been the better call. Didn't do that. Yay, me. So, <laughs> so let's switch out here, just predicting him to go for another Sign Shock. It's going to bring Maurice. And we take the Sign Shock decently. Not really. And um, at the same time here, like, I could probably bait him for a Thunderbolt here or an Ice Beam, but I'm not going to gamble it and stay in as it goes directly for the Thunderbolt. And that just really, really does reside in a lot of damage onto me. And it's kind of unfortunate. I knew Lantern with Volt, uh, Volt Absorb would have been very helped there had I pulled that off, but I didn't do that. As it goes to Premature, the Haunter, and here's where I realized fuck that, Haunter is tremendously dangerous for me. I need to have some kind of counterplay here to actually be able to whittle him around. As I still bring in my Rithiel, and my ideal play here is basically yet again go for U turn because he can't risk that I go directly for a drill pack or anything like that. Even though I do that and I get some decent chunk of damage onto it, he can't risk it and I really did force this water switch out. Luckily it didn't go to the Seal Valley. As I am fully aware of, you know, possibly the rocks are coming, as they do, but I have Parasite on the field, yo, and 
<laughs> I'm actually going to go over easy agility here. Uh, I do pack them Brick Break and Knockoff, so when a Haunter comes in, I'll tell you, know, please, please be Specs. If you're Specs, that means that at least my Knockoff will KO you and I can have speed. It is not Specs, sadly it is Scarf, and it actually still is enough to KO, so that's real unfortunate, as Parasect just, yeah, dies. Uh, so I can bring Keisha here. Now, my easy play here is to either go for Rocks or go for Knockoff, but I felt that, you know, we can get some damage onto this, and I felt really sad of trying to just get this thing done, since we already know that it is Scarf, so I went for Knockoff, and we do knock off the Rocky Helmet from this Sand Slash, but at the same time, yeah, we are in a predicament here, and uh, I basically felt that, you know, I hope that he has no speed EVs, because that means I will outspeed him, as first time we do, so he kind of confirms that possibly that he doesn't have his speed EVs, and he's going to go for a knockoff on his own, and, uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? It is clearly a matchup of the Giants here, as, you know, I just keep going for the Earthquakes, will him down, as he does that himself, and, you know, we, we don't necessarily do too much damage, as we both are bulky slashes, after all. But I will try to optimize, and I think I actually go for a Stealth Rock here, which was kind of unfortunate, because, I mean, had I gone for a knockoff predicting this, hell yeah, I would have been a dead haunter, because it's brittle as a bug. But, yeah, we don't do that, and he's just going to KO me with Shadow Ball. Luckily, though, we know he's locked into that, which means, and I really can't stress this enough, that he can't tackle the big Moo, which is the Milk Tank. And I'm just going to go for a very, very easy play, which is actually going directly for the Curse, as he's going to bring in his Sandy Cheeks, and uh, since we're self going to feel, you know, he's going to get the recital damage, which is always nice. But, uh, yeah. I mean, we get the white herb going on, you know, we get everything that Miltyke wants, which the big Moo wants. And from this point, I'm just actually going to go for a power-up punch, just to get as much damage boost as possible before Arbok comes in with Intimidate checking, as uh, we outspeed everything on his team, actually, barring, of course, the Haunter. So he goes for Rapid Spin, that's a fair play. I'll keep going for the power-up punch. And here is where our opponent does a very, very strong play here. Go into Haunter, predicting me to go for another power-up punch, which I do. It was a big risk on his side, but not only that, while I do outspeed it naturally, we know that it's Scarfed, and it didn't cross my mind that it could have Destiny Bond, so... Fuck. Yeah, that <laughs> that's happened. A tremendous play from my opponent. Adam here really pulled all the stops here and got my Milk Tank. And the reason that's a big deal is for one really good reason, and that is that my remaining Pokémon, which is my Lantern and Pharaoh, Cannot necessarily win against the remaining Pokemon. Primal, of course, both the Arbok and Sil Valley are well enough to be actually dealing with the remaining Mons. So, yeah, we do actually lose this game too, or what do you believe? We have the Sil Valley remaining with the Arbok. And while it is, you know, fair, and actually a trio, so I do believe Sandslash is actually living. But sadly, we can't tackle this at all, and it really came down to the play that Adam made it at in the end there. And that was really just to come in on that very, very risky power up punch. Had I gone for the return, just being ballsy as all hell, I would have killed that Haunter, and it would have been no issue for my Milk Tank to just wrap up the game due to his remaining Mon not being able to deal with the Milk Tank whatsoever. So, a very good game from Adam, and really very nice job from you. Very good play there in the, in the mid game, and of course, in the end, it was a Destiny Bond, and you were definitely the world winner of this battle event. I mean, that was just awesome. So yeah, a quick rundown, I guess, about the game. Well, what can I say? I think I played the game okay, <laughs> to some extent. Uh, I definitely felt, you know, I'm getting into the PU feeling again versus a very tougher matchup that is Mesprit and Haunter. That is a very scary combination, being nullifying of anything that is, uh, well, what do you call it? Um, Ground-based damage, so it made it kind of tough for me to capitalize on Earthquake from Sandslash, for example. But through and through, you know, Rangoro really did some decent stuff there, and getting eradicated and and whatnot. But I think it was very heavily weighted down with uh, Parasect clearly not working the way it should, uh, or it worked the way it should. But he sure as hell covered that whatsoever. So, you know, with the Haunter, what I was speeding it being scarfed and all. So yeah, I'll, I will say this. I think. I think I had a decent chance, but failing to uh, acknowledge him that, you know, Destiny Bond could be a thing on Haunter, yeah, that's my fault, and that's something I have to be dealing with, because, let's face it, it is the ideal play, and it really, really did work to my opponent's favor, and it did that very good, so props to Adam, if anything, and definitely was his only shot of actually just turned his bell on its head, and it sure as hell worked, and he was a very worthy winner due to it, so thank you, of course, as always, so much for the game, man. 
And for anybody who's watching, make sure to of course follow me on that Discord group. If you want to follow me on Twitter, make sure to do so too. To of course battle me. And as always, you know, write in the comment section that you're a pussy, and you know I'll, I'll figure stuff out from there. And anyway, guys, <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.